Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. And as you can plainly see, I finally did it. I gave up. I'm back to Windows. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm never going to go back to Windows. But what I am doing is, um, I am actually working on a computer now where uh, someone has been having problems, uh, you know, no surprise there with Windows. And uh, basically, um, I'm going to move them over to Linux. Okay, and so this is somebody who's never used anything outside of Windows, and so this will be a new experience for them. But for them, all they want to do is just use their computer, okay? So that's going to be doing the internet, doing office applications, surfing in the web, you know, doing some multimedia, everything that you would normally do on a computer without the hassles that it normally comes with Windows, okay? Now, if you have not seen it, I had a previous episode where I talked about transitioning from Windows 10 to Linux, specifically Linux Mint. Now, on this particular episode, I'm actually going to be moving completely over from Windows to Linux. So we will actually be wiping out whatever's on a hard drive, which is Windows 7 Home Edition, over to Linux. And right here, I have a USB stick. This is a 16 gig stick. You could get you know any of these memory sticks and usually they're going to be less than ten dollars and this actually has linux mint 17.3 on it so if you looked at my last video uh, i talked about you know getting virtual machine installed downloading linux mint and then um you know using it on the virtual machine but in this case we're actually going to be booting off of this usb stick and we're going to be installing from this. You know, nowadays, most people don't install from a disk. Um, and most of the newer computers, at least the, the smaller form factors, they don't even have a disk drive anymore. So you're going to be using a bootable USB stick. And also, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a very simple USB stick from your Linux virtual machine in less than five minutes. So you could get this same thing. So basically, once you've created your Linux USB stick, all you're gonna do is just plug it into your USB port on your computer, okay? And we're gonna reset the uh, Windows computer, okay? Now, here's the thing, okay? Uh, you gotta make sure that uh, this is actually bootable from the USB stick. And you could do that in the system BIOS. That's a lot easier to do on Windows 7. On Windows 8 and especially on Windows 10 machines, that, uh, that's a little bit harder. So you're actually going to have to do a little research on how to get into your system BIOS on your specific machine. Okay. And there's also another uh, website. It's called uh, Linux on Laptops that tells you which laptops works best with Linux. But um, I really can't help everybody who has... Uh, their type of machines you know every machine is different but basically you want to boot from the USB stick so here we're gonna go ahead and restart this okay and I'm gonna show you how that's done on the system BIOS at least from here okay uh, typically whenever you reboot you either press escape or F12 and it'll go into the system BIOS if you have Windows 8 or Windows 10 normally you have to do that through the operating system itself you can no longer go into the BIOS just by resetting and uh, pressing a combination of keys and so here whenever it comes up before it gets to the Windows screen um, you're gonna press escape in this case and then you see there it says boot device options F9 I'm gonna do that okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and boot up from this U USB stick which is this sad disk I'm gonna press enter and now BAM there it goes now it's gonna be booting Linux Mint and you know if you did this uh, if you follow my tutorial on the last one where I talked about doing this on a virtual machine it's exactly the same steps that's why I really really recommend that you Learn how to do this on a virtual machine first and learn how to use Linux on a virtual machine first because it's going to make the transition a lot easier because you've already used it and you already know how to install Linux Mint. The only big different step here is that you're actually going to be doing it completely from the USB stick and this will completely wipe out 
windows on your machine. So if you are not comfortable in using Linux Mint or have never used anything outside of Windows, I highly, highly recommend that you go through my old video and just do it through a virtual machine. That way, you know, you could still run Windows and you could run and learn Linux on the virtual machine without worrying about whether or not this is going to actually um, hurt your machine in, in any particular way. And whenever it boots up from the USB stick and I know this might be a little long but it's actually going to do the same thing it did on your virtual machine. It's going to make sure all your hardware is working and uh, you know Linux like I said it does a really really great job in making sure everything works in your machine. Okay so you could see uh, that actually the Linux Mint logo is up. Um, it's kind of bright because of, I have all this lighting here so it's starting up from the USB stick, it's pretty amazing where we're at with technology now that it's that quote unquote easy. And like I said, you know, just like you do in your virtual machine, the USB stick's going to check everything, make sure it's working. As you can tell, things pop up, which is good, which means that the Linux Mint has the drivers to work with your graphics card so your display works. And one thing that's really important that you want to do is you definitely, definitely want to make sure that your Wi-Fi works. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and do that now and uh, I'll just be back in just a second. So I'm going to have to put my password in. Okay, so I put my Wi-Fi password in successfully and this is very important. And um, as I, I think I stated on that previous video that I talked about, you know, sometimes there are driver issues with either your graphics card or the Wi-Fi card. And you definitely want to make sure your internet works because if that doesn't work, then, um, you know, it's pretty bad. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, test this right here. Make sure this works. And make sure your internet works. And this is like, you know, one thing that I stated before that I really, really love about Linux is because it has the drivers for everything. I'm not going to have to do like Windows where I'm going to have to either have the device drivers on a disk or I'm going to have to go download all my drivers. For anyone who's ever had to install Windows from beginning to end, you know that it is not a very simple process, okay? Especially if you have really complex graphics cards. So let's go ahead and go to a website. I know it works because this website came up. Oops, that's wrong. We say, well... I typed it wrong, but um, at least something came up. And so, good. So, everything works. And let me just tell you, this whole operating system right now is running off my USB drive. You know, so that is amazing. That's a testament to Linux because Linux does not require as many resources as it does on Windows. And I have not even installed Linux on this desktop yet. Okay, so let's go to a, a graphics intensive site, you know. Let's go to a site like CNET if, well, my keyboard doesn't work. Let's go to IGN. Let's see if that works. Okay. Yeah, looks like it works. And it's fast, which is nice. So, uh, once again, this is running off a USB stick. So, look, everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And, you know, just like I said, it's just like doing it on a virtual machine. So, you go here to install Linux Mint. Okay. And, uh, you know, just a disclaimer for anybody who's doing this, you know, uh, you do do this at your own risk. You know, uh, once again, I definitely, definitely recommend that you do this on the virtual machine inside your Windows or Mac machine. Um, I do not recommend you completely overriding your operating system if you've never done this before, okay? But in this case, I am completely overriding this operating system. And as you can see, if you did this through the virtual machine, it's exactly the same. There's nothing that's different. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, d overwrite this and replace Windows with Linux Mint. And see, so right here, erase this and install Linux Mint. So once you do this, there is no going back. Okay, so let's go ahead and install now. And it uh, basically put Linux Mint on here. Yes. And the install process is now going to start. And it's going to be installing everything from the USB stick. So, there we go. So, uh, I'll be back once this finishes installing. Okay, installation is finished. Um, so, you can continue testing or restart. We're just going to go ahead and restart now. 
and what it's going to ask you to do is it's going to ask you to remove the USB stick here in just a second and um, if it doesn't ask you there it is please remove insulation media and close the tray all right remove the USB stick press enter and here's the big one you know um, it should restart and if Linux doesn't start um, <laughs> then you're in trouble no just kidding if it doesn't start you know um, you're gonna have to figure it out and that's the wonderful thing about learning Linux you're gonna learn probably a lot more about computers than you've ever wanted to know so we're gonna wait until it boots up and um, if for some reason it doesn't boot up right after the restart um, you could always shut down your computer and then turn it back on because sometimes that happens but in this case it's starting up and this is from a cold boot and so one of the things that you learn um, everything's just faster in Linux it it resources it doesn't need as much and unlike Windows where you're gonna have to do a defrag um, every now and then on Linux um, you don't have to okay um, its file management system is a lot more efficient it wor just works a lot better so you're gonna put in the password that you put in um, whenever you uh, whenever you installed okay and you just saw my password <laughs> so I'm gonna change that if you could get to my computer so now it is booting up and you know once it boots up uh, you definitely want to do a few quick checks first and foremost make sure make sure your Wi-Fi is working and your graphics card uh, your you know your display you know if it's gonna work or not it, because you already tried it on the actual uh, window stick you know whenever you had it installed and see it works so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that and let me see if the Wi-Fi well it looks like the Wi-Fi is already hooked up after I installed it the great thing is this version of Linux Mint um, it remembered whatever Wi-Fi password that I set up whenever I was installing so that's nice I don't have to put it in twice and let's see yep looks like it works uh, let's go ahead and just try a test uh, we'll just try IGN again and I just want to make sure the internet works and yep it works and there you go from beginning to end um, I now have Linux Mint 17.3 over Windows and how long did that take me uh, about 40 minutes from beginning to end I have a new operating system it's faster uh, definitely less resource heavy I don't have to uh, worry about viruses and malware I mean that's every system is prone to that but on Linux it's very very rare everything works I've never had a you know knock on wood I've never had any viruses or anything so an antivirus is not something that you really need in this everything seems to work let me bring up LibreOffice and that should come up and this is your office app your office type application it's compatible with Microsoft Office oh it works there's your quote-unquote Excel spreadsheet but in this case it's called Cal uh, let me see if I could change my desktop uh, change desktop background oh yeah so uh, let's uh, go to Rosa and as you can see everything just works it just works I don't have to download any drivers it's already installed it works got all my programs here already pre-installed and there you go y'all there you have it uh, this is I just installed a brand new operating system over Windows in about 40 minutes and uh, the longest amount of time you're going to be spending is basically copying all your stuff over and hopefully you had a backup on an external drive somewhere okay um, yeah definitely if you're going to be doing this you know make sure you get used to it on a virtual machine and then when you are ready to finally make the move from Windows or Mac to Linux Mint make sure you back everything up on an external drive please you know please do that or back it up uh, online on cloud wherever and then install Linux like you just saw here do it on a USB stick okay um, and um, let me show you how to do this on a USB stick okay and um, if for, for some reason for people who need more training on this I'll make another video but basically 
on your virtual machine. Whenever you have this on your virtual machine in Linux, you could do this on your virtual machine. So what you do is, um, this is already installed by the way, uh, by default. So you stick your USB stick in here on your machine, okay? And there is a tool, okay? It's already built in. It's under accessories and it's called USB uh, image writer. It's, you don't even have to download it. It's already there. So what that means is you need to download the ISO. If you remember, you go to linuxmint.com, download the ISO, you find the ISO, you choose it wherever you downloaded it, okay? And then you're going to tell it to install on the USB stick you just put in. You click on write. Takes less than five minutes. Bam, you have a bootable Linux Mint stick. That's it. That easy. And that's it for this episode. Uh, yeah, for all of you who were happy to see me go back to Windows, I'm sorry to disappoint. And if you had any questions, comments, ideas, leave it in your comments and ideas below. If you like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. And if you had any other questions, I am on Snapchat on Geek Outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.